Hey ladies, welcome back to another video. It's your girl Mrs. Emily Paints and today we're gonna be talking about how my doctor was trying to kick me out of the hospital. I just had surgery, literally just had surgery. They had three different procedures done on me and my whole experience was freaking crazy and I was like, let me go and talk to my TikTok fam, my YouTube fam, my Instagram fam, all of you guys, because I think this was so crazy. This doctor was so freaking rude. Okay, so it all started, you guys, on Thursday last week, which I'm not gonna get into like the dates and everything, but it was just last week. <laughs> it was on a Thursday and I was having a lot of issues with my stomach because I had eaten seafood, you guys. I ate some seafood that gave me seafood poisoning and it was because it was brought from Mexico, so it was, I guess, very strong. I probably ate a bad one. I don't know what happened, but my stomach was acting up, and I asked my mom if she had something to help me, you know, with my stomach. So she gives me this random pill that she has because it's for your digestive system and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, okay, cool. So I take the pill. I take the pill, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to start to feel better, right? No. <laughs> no, I did not. After that pill, you guys, the seafood poisoning did get a little better, but this triggered my monthly visit ahead of time. I normally get it every two months, and I had already gotten it the previous month, and then it triggered. So, I was like, this is new, and I was in pain, you guys. I have very, very painful periods. I have mentioned it here on my channel before. So it triggered my period and I started getting so much pain and I was taking painkillers and then it got to the point where the painkillers were not working anymore. Like always, this always happens to me. So I go to the hospital and you guys, I consistently go to the hospital every two months when I get it because I can't handle the pain and the painkillers don't work anymore. So I go to the hospital, they automatically give me some of that strong medication that starts with an M, starts like morph i'm not gonna say the whole thing because i don't want this video to you know get taken down or something so they gave me some of that medication and i was okay for a little while and then they did an ultrasound and everything they told me oh you have a nine centimeter uh fibroid or so they said it was a fibroid so i was like oh my god like i knew i had fibroids but i didn't think i was gonna have a fibroid that was that humongous so and it doesn't even sound humongous but being inside your stomach like it is and it was noticeable too now that i think back i'll tell you guys about that right now but anyways after the first dosage of the pain medication you guys i felt a little bit better but then i needed a second one because it was just coming back and i kept wanting to you know throw up like over and over again from the pain and just how weak i was already so after the second dosage they send me home and they prescribe me pain medication so i come home i'm relaxing i'm you know still feeling okay sort of and then boom i have to go back to the hospital because the pain comes back even more intense i feel like i'm gonna throw my guts out nothing is working not even what they gave me and i was just like oh my god like what is this like it's never this crazy so I go back to the hospital and the ladies first of all they were so rude you guys they were so rude the ladies from the front of the hospital she was like you kind of have to wait for the medicine to kick in sweetie like you can't just you know take it one time and expect for it to work i was like i've been through this process before and my boyfriend was arguing with her too like he was like yeah like you guys need to take her in she was here this morning and she was like, are you sure you want to get taken in? I was like, yes. Like, yes. I was so irritated, you guys. Imagine being in so much pain. I was so irritated that I was just like, yes. Like, in the emergency room, just screaming. <laughs> and they take me inside. And right away, they, they're like, okay, what do we do? And some of the nurses that were there earlier, they remembered that I was there. So they were just like, okay, like, what are we supposed to do now? Because we can't just keep giving you that same medication so they talked to an OBGYN that they had there which I have seen two times before sorry if you guys hear a plane or any noise in the background I'm still at my mom's house right now so anyways where was I oh yeah so the the doctor tells them to keep me overnight because it was already late so I stayed overnight you guys like they they check what the belongings that i had everything they told my boyfriend like she's gonna have to stay in blah 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 so they transferred me into an actual room 
and they're giving me pain medication and they tell me that the doctor is going to be coming in the next morning and I'm going to get surgery. And I was like, surgery? Like, they never mentioned anything until I was already in the room, like, with pain medication. And I look at my boyfriend, like, surgery? And I, I assumed right away, like, they're going to take my uterus out because they've been wanting to take my uterus out forever now. Like, every doctor that I see wants to take my uterus out. And I was like, this is it. Like, it's happening. And I haven't had kids or anything. So I was just bawling my eyes out. Like, I don't want them to do this. Well, and then the nurse comes back and tells me, we don't know, like, what the doctor has in mind for your surgery. So we'll have to see tomorrow when he gets here. And he'll have to take a look at you before anything. So I was like, okay. I thought this was bad, you guys. Wait for it. If you made it this far in this video, you guys, please comment fibroids down below so that I know that you're a real one and you're actually watching my video. Because... It gets intense after this like this is just the beginning it's nothing so i'm laying there and my boyfriend can't stay over with me like nobody can stay the night it was just visitors so he's about to go home and i'm like oh my god like i'm staying by myself which is nothing new to me because back in virginia when i used to live over there i actually used to stay by myself in the hospital because of covid and everything so i was so used to suffering by myself having no choice i was like all right all i have to do is hang in here until the doctor comes the next day so keep in mind you guys i actually had this doctor back when i was 15 years old 15 years old i'm 27 today and i remember how rough this doctor was and mean so i was just like oh my god like i had no other choice because he was the only OBGYN in this hospital so he comes in and he's checking me and you guys like you know typical OBGYN, they put a finger in and they press on your stomach and i swear to god i felt like the sharpest pain in the world like this man literally made my pain medication not work after they had just given it to me that that afternoon too so after that i was just like bawling my eyes out because the pain just got more intense after he pressed on it and he was like okay like right away i heard him talking to the nurse he was gonna be doing three different procedures so i have the name of the procedures right here the first one is exploratory laparotomy, laparotomy, and I think that's just like, you know, when they open you up and they see the inside and, and look at what's going on, which by the way, my, my surgery was a C-section type of surgery, so I have a big cut, like a really, really big cut below my stomach, and then they also did a left ovarian cystectomy, cystectomy. I think that's how you say it. Sorry, guys. I, I don't know how to pronounce these words. But that just means that they were taking out a cyst from my left ovary. Which apparently this cyst had was 9 centimeters. It wasn't a fibroid. They mistaken it in the ultrasound. And the reason why was because the, the cyst on my left ovary had a bunch of fibroids around it. Like growing on it. It was weird even the doctor said it was weird and they also did a fundal myomectomy which means that they opened up my uterus like they brought my uterus out a little and they opened it up and took out a huge fibroid that was in my uterus so it was three different things that they were doing you guys and they made this long cut up to like about right here under my stomach which has been so hard to recuperate Re recuperate from i can't even pronounce the word anyways so they were prepping prepping me for surgery and i was in so much pain you guys the even those pain medications that they were giving me they weren't working anymore so they're taking me in my mom's bawling her eyes out because she was so worried like super worried i was worried because they're gonna put me to sleep i got general anesthesia so i was put to sleep completely obviously and they took me into the surgery room the doctor reassured me he was like we're gonna take this out of you you're gonna be okay you're gonna be fine so i felt safe with this doctor i'm not gonna lie he looked like he knew what he was doing but this is where it gets ugly i go in there and they do they, they put me to sleep and i remember like the first little bit of the anesthesia that they gave me because they gave it to me in two sections they put in the first little section after they tied me up and then when they did that like my eyes were halfway closed and I can still hear my surroundings and feel everyone. And I was telling the doctor, please doctor, fix me, fix me. I guess I was falling asleep and I kept telling him, fix me. And then they gave me the second part of the dosage and I was out. Then I remember you guys waking up 
and saying pain, pain, like I'm in pain because I felt excruciating pain, you guys. Like my whole body felt like, like I got hit by a bus. I remember them telling me not to move and to cough, that I needed to cough so that I guess my lungs would open. So I was coughing and I couldn't even see you guys. I was like out of this world. I kept like zoning in and zoning out and I was just, it was scary. And then they finally, after a while, took me to my room and I kept going back to sleep and waking up and going back to sleep. And I was in so much pain. You guys don't even know, you guys. Oh my God, this was the beginning of the nightmare. After that, you guys, my mom came in and she was like super happy that everything came out okay. And then I started choking. Yes. So going into surgery like that is so scary. They put a tube down your throat and you have something in your mouth. Like a mask inside, like right here. So I had like a whole cut inside my mouth on this area, which I'm still healing from right now. But my, my mom was freaking out just like I was freaking out because I started choking on a phlegm because of the surgery apparently you you get them so i couldn't cough because my wound was like so fresh i had just came out of surgery so i started panicking i started panicking because I, it was stuck in my throat and i was choking and i couldn't cough and i would every time i would like <clears throat> you know like cough or <clears throat> clear my throat i swear you guys i would scream out in pain because of the cut that i had it was the worst and i was like that for like a good 10 minutes but it felt like forever until i finally got it out but my mom was freaking out and the nurse was freaking out because i couldn't get it out and it was just horrible by the way i was in the hospital for like five days because things got complicated so i couldn't go to the restroom this was my third day not going to the restroom at all and not being able to eat anything obviously because of the surgery just you know the liquids that they're putting in my system which by the way you guys i'm still very very bruised a week later by the way very bruised i still have like a bunch of um stuff where they had like the ivs and stuff i was super dehydrated and i i couldn't go to the restroom so the next day after that surgery the doctor comes in this is the second day and the doctor comes in and he's like what are you still doing here and my whole family was in the room visiting me. It was my mom, my dad, and my boyfriend. And then my brother was on his way with his girlfriend, but they hadn't gotten there yet. So it's just them three. And so the doctor, the doctor was like, what are you still doing here? He's like, you need to be home. You can't be here. I was like, what do you mean? So I thought he was being sarcastic. And I was like, I'm still in pain and I can't breathe right. Which was another problem, by the way. And he's like, no, like, you need to go home. He's like, what are you doing here? Sorry, guys, there's a mosquito. <laughs> he's like, what are you doing here? He's like, you don't need any liquids. He's like, have you walked? I was like, just to the restroom. I can't really get up. I, I couldn't move, you guys. I couldn't even breathe. That morning, they literally did two x-rays on me. They did two x-rays on me because the pain was so bad. On this area because of the anesthesia that I couldn't breathe right and it was just it was so suffocating and and hard like I, I thought I was gonna die but the doctor kept telling me like you're fine you're fine you need to go home you're going home he automatically told the nurse disconnect the the liquid the fluids you guys I couldn't breathe to the point where I had oxygen going in to help me breathe the whole time and this doctor was trying to send me home and I was like, I was like, I can't go home like this. I told him, I'm not going anywhere. He's like, yes, you're going home. You're okay. I was like, no. Like, are you kidding me? And I looked at my family in disbelief. Like, what is this? And he's like, yeah, he's like, you're fine. And the nurses automatically were already like going to write things down. And they were about to start disconnecting me. And I was so in shock at how rude the doctor was being with me. Like his tone, you guys, like he was being so loud. I personally think he was upset because they made him come in that Saturday because he wasn't in the hospital they made him come in for me because i started bleeding out you guys and i got so scared because i have had a blood transfusion from bleeding out like that after surgery so he had to come in and make sure that i was good so i guess he was pissed because it was the weekend it was saturday he probably didn't even want to go in there so i tell him like like why are you being so rude i told him he's like rude He's like, I'm not being rude. He's like, you think I'm being rude? Like he raised his voice at me. I was like, you're being disrespectful. Me as your patient, I'm telling you 
I'm not okay. This hurts. I haven't even gone to the restroom. I haven't eaten anything. I can't get up. I'm not breathing right. I'm using oxygen to breathe. You're not listening to what I'm telling you. And then he's like, I'm not being re rude to you. You're okay. You can go home. You're going home. I was like, what the hell? Like, my boyfriend tells him, he's like, hey, you do not talk to her like that. He's like, she's my patient. And then he was like, yeah, well, she's my partner and you do not scream at her like that. And then things got tense. The doctor got very upset and he ordered for everything to be disconnected and he walked away. And I was like, what in the world just happened? Like, I told the nurses, I was like, you guys saw how much pain I've been in and I can't even breathe. I can't even walk. I, like, I'm struggling so bad. And they were like, yeah, yeah, I know. And one of the nurses, she was so sweet. She was like, I understand. Like, I've never seen this doctor like that. Like, I've never, ever, ever seen him get like that. He's like, it's okay, like, when he screams at, at us because we're the workers. But for him to be screaming at a patient, it's not right. And I was like, yeah, like, super unprofessional. Anyways, turns out that later on that night, because I still stayed the night because I wasn't okay, he had ordered for them to take out my pain medication from what they were giving me, which was like, how was I supposed to survive being in the hospital without any pain medication whatsoever after just having a C-section the previous day so i was just like what in the world and i could have sued this doctor if he did that and i was still not okay because this after that i got so bad you guys like i couldn't keep anything down no liquids nothing i was throwing everything up the whole night and i was by myself because i couldn't have somebody stay over so i was throwing up and throwing up and the nurse literally had to call him back and tell him hey doctor like she needs liquids she can't keep anything in not even water not even the ice nothing because i haven't gone i hadn't gone to the restroom you guys this was like the fourth day already no restroom nothing no food in my system nothing so the doctor finally ordered okay turn on the liquids again turn everything back on and i'm not gonna lie you guys that was like the most horrible experience ever i didn't do anything about it with this doctor because because things didn't get really bad like he still turned everything back on and everything but i swear if he wouldn't have done that and I, he would have sent me home and i would have gotten that bad i would have sued his butt he was so unprofessional and oh it was so scary <laughs> so now i should be okay whether to have babies or you know healthier he did do his job and i'm very very grateful that everything turned out good thanks to the doctor thanks to god i'm getting better today's my first week since the surgery and i do feel better it's still hard to breathe <laughs> a little bit um and walk around but here i am i'm alive everything's okay thank god i have a faja let me show you guys wait let me try to get up because everything hurts check it out i have this faja right here and it's just it presses on my stomach obviously i don't have it too tight so it doesn't hurt me but it helps me so much like you guys you don't understand to look to go to the restroom I feel like my insides are gonna come out like every time I go to the restroom I can feel like air bubbles all over my stomach and it feels like on the inside somebody's trying to open my cut with a sharp knife like it's the most painful feeling in the freaking world uh, I don't know how people do it when they have a c-section and they just had a baby and then still have to take care of the baby you know <laughs> although obviously my procedures were different I had other things done on the inside that are also causing different discomfort and you know pain but apparently I should be healed up in six weeks. So this is my first week. I'm feeling so much better, you guys. And I'm so glad I got to share this with you guys because this experience was so scary and happened out of nowhere. But I'm so grateful because I have been fighting with this for so long. I've been suffering for so long. It's It's been enough, you know, like it's it, finally, finally I'm, I'm going to be okay. And I've been eating so healthy after that surgery, like this whole week. I have been, you know, only eating soups and drinking water nothing with sugar very small amounts of salt because i do not want to go back into old habits where i was drinking alcohol and you know eating so many processed foods and and just crazy stuff like that that was gonna that's just gonna mess up my system all over again if i continue to do that that's just it you guys i just wanted to share my experience with you guys and tell you guys i'm good everything is good because i know i haven't been live i haven't been posting my tutorials but right now i have already fixed some so they can go up so don't worry i am back everything thankfully is <sighs> I'm just so, so, so grateful that everything is good. And for the support my family has given me, you guys, 
it has been crazy my parents let me sleep in their room they're sleeping in the living room where i normally sleep everybody's been so so sweet my family that went to go visit me in the hospital too like it meant so much to know that they tried to go because they didn't let them go in it wasn't visiting hours but they all showed up and that's what matters my cousin and his boyfriend that brought me flowers it just meant so much y'all don't even know it brightened me up because i was like oh i felt so loved like i'm not alone <laughs> you know with this and my boyfriend too he was there the whole time getting off of work early like just making sure i was okay taking me anything that i needed till today this man has still been taking care of me this whole time making sure i don't need anything so i'm just i'm so happy and grateful to be alive to be able to you know get back to normal and yeah, you guys i just want to share my experience with you guys hopefully i can make some more videos here where i like talk to you guys whether it's about you know obviously more positive things but i am planning on kind of bringing in some more of these videos where i actually talk to you guys and not just the tutorials let me know what you guys think about that down in the comments if you guys like chit chats because i like to talk a lot <laughs> anyways that is all for this video you guys thank you so much for watching i do appreciate you guys a lot and remember to comment fibroid if you guys made it all the way up to this point in the video and you guys watched it all the way through it means a lot to me when you guys watch my videos all the way through so yeah you guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye